Of all of the Linux distributions I've used, Sabion Linux is probably the most interesting. I actually used Sabion as my daily eons ago, and I remember it being alright, but getting software and games that I wanted was difficult, so I hopped on to something else. What you'll be seeing here is Sabion Linux 19.3, which is the current stable version listed on the website and ostensibly not the version you want. If you really want to try running Sabion, try the daily image. More on that later. The installer Sabion uses is Calamares. Okay, let's move on. Sabion comes with a few different flavors, but I remember GNOME being the flagship, so that's what we went with. There's this awkward little welcome app, which is fine, I guess, but all of the buttons are just hyperlinks to different web pages, which is lame. Over in the resource department, we see that a fresh install weighs in at about 7.4 gigabytes, and Free is telling us that Sabion is chewing on about a gigabyte of memory. And HTOP tells us that we've got 135 tasks and an obscene 349 threads. So Sabion is anything but a low-carb distro, if you know what I'm saying. And by the way, this is the vanilla monospace font, and it just might be the ugliest fixed-width font that I've ever seen before. Now try not to laugh, but Sabion Linux is a beginner-friendly distro. And what's up with everyone trying to make all of these beginner distros? What is that even supposed to mean? I guess to make things more friendly, Sabion has its own set of custom tools. There's Rego, which is the front end, and it replaced the previous tool that I remember using, you know, a long time ago. It has super casual prompts, which I love. Like, I seriously love this stuff. I wish that more pop-ups and alerts were more informal like these are. Now Rego is one of those tools that does various and sundry things, like you can update your mirrors here, you can clean the cache, as well as search for apps and all that stuff. And honestly, the toolkit is really fascinating, and if this was package manager delves, I might spend a bit more time explaining how all of it works, but since this is distro delves, we're going to be looking at the Linux distro Sabion Linux. We'll just stick with the mundane stuff. A regular user would run updates from the notification or from Rego itself. But speaking of updates, this is a good segue as to why you want to avoid 19.3. See, Sabion did a big library migration thing, and basically it's not backwards compatible with the old way of doing things, so if you were to try to run 19.3 like me here and run an update, it would corrupt the entire system. And that's all, folks. Now the funny thing about the daily image is that it seems to try to install the NVIDIA drivers for you, which is, I mean, honestly pretty impressive for a Gentoo based distro, but of course it fails and the safe installer doesn't work because of some stupid X issue. So I'm actually recording this footage on the distro delves rig, but using my old Radeon HD 7770. So this is the first distro delves episode with a Radeon card. How cool is that? So yeah, from here on out, we're going to be looking at Sabion's daily image. The background selection was kind of meh, but the defaults for 19.3 and this daily image are pretty cool. We've got a recent version of GNOME with GNOME tweaks pre-installed. The default theme is Arc using the Numix icon. It's a, a bit dated, but it's classic in my opinion. There's a number of GNOME extensions that are pre-installed, including the weird application menu thing. I didn't know anyone actually used this. And the default app selection was a little weird and maybe a little bloated too. Liberate Office is pre-installed along with Pitivy, a video editor, Font Foundry, and a weird fingerprint reader tester. <laughs> In NeoFetch, we see the cool Sabion logo and apparently they call this Sabion Linux 20.3. It's got the 5.4 kernel and 1,230 eMerge packages installed. A rather old version of Bash at 4.4, and the desktop is GNOME with that Arc and Numix theme. So there's no EXFAT support, and the encrypted drive required root to mount, which is stupid. And while we're here, we may as well knock out the networking stuff. It sucks. Even though it discovered all of these computers on my network, none of them worked, because, I mean, why would they? And there's no obvious way of setting up Samba for folder sharing, and there's no DLNA media sharing either for some reason. Printer support also sucked. It required root to access the printers and add printers. And even though my printer was detected, there's no drivers for it. And Bluetooth just didn't work. There's another distro that did this too. It's like it detected it and didn't want to work with it. Maybe this is a gnome regression, I don't know. So the archive tests, 7-zip didn't work, but RAR did. So that's a new one. Every single one of the audio files played back just fine, and all of the video files did too, so that's pretty darn cool. 
And all of our app images worked good too. No Flatpak support, and I couldn't even find SnapD or Flatpak in the repo, so that's a thing, or, or not a thing, I guess. Now because this is an older Radeon cards, most of the games I usually test, all three of them, aren't supported. See, Dirt here will actually work on the Radeon card, but as you can see, there's graphical glitches here and there. And the benchmark seemed a little off. It benched 51 frames a second against KDE Neon's 45 when it was running a 750 Ti, so okay. The game played fine though, other than the, you know, graphical glitches. I've used Xenotic in other videos, but I never changed the graphics preset, which is pretty stupid in retrospect because that means I don't have a baseline and the charts wind up looking like this. The Keybench time demo averaged about 51 frames a second, but as you can see, there were massive dips to the point where in major action, it wasn't even playable. And last, I decided to use the time demo on TF2. The graphics preset is very high and AA is set to two times because anti-aliasing takes a pretty big performance hit. The time demo reported 107 frames a second, but as you can see here, my average is uh, quite a bit below that. Now, Sabion Linux is in an unfortunate state right now, and honestly, that actually makes me sad. The thing that sets Sabion apart from its other Gen 2 desktop peers is that it has really nice branding and tools. It's really the Manjaro of Gen 2 distributions, in my opinion. And I totally think there's room for another distro like Manjaro in the Linux scene today. There's all these people that talk about how cool Arch is and how proud they are to use Arch and, you know, whatever. But have you ever seen Gen 2? Gen 2 is so freaking cool, dude, it's highly underrated, in my opinion. So yeah, I really like the idea of Sabi on Linux, but right now, it's a mess, and there's no really reason to use it besides curiosity. I don't know what the maintainers have planned for it, but I hope it's something good. I hope that you like this episode in format of Distro Delves. It's a little bit different than the others. If you want to support me and the show and the channel and all that, you become a patron and enjoy all the cool stuff I do over there. I write a little behind the scenes sort of blog post for every episode. So if you want to know how this episode was produced and my thoughts on Sabion and stuff like that, you can hop over there and read about it. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.